Earlier on this year, coaches from QPR, Hull City and Brighton Hove Albion made the long trip south to Burkina Faso in Western Africa. They were taking part in a project called Coaching for Hope and earlier on this week there was a reverse exchange where one of the coaches from Burkina Faso had his first trip out of the country here to the UK. So I caught up with Andy Evans and Steve Koshy from the community department to find out a little bit more. Well, we were very fortunate to be invited out by um, a charity called International Services, along with our colleagues at Brighton and Hove Albion and Hull City, to go out to Burkina Faso and teach uh, 100 orphans uh, football skills and at the same time 24 uh, local youth workers um, basic coaching skills. Mm -hmm. Steve, um, what was your first impressions on, on kind of landing in, in Burkina Faso? Um, it wasn't what I expected at all, to be honest with you. Um, I was one of the few coaches who actually um, took well to the local, uh, the local people in Burkina Faso, and ended up losing all my all my change out of my pockets because <laughs> they thought I was a, a big film star or pop star, you know. But obviously, <laughs> I wasn't. Um, but yeah, once I, once we landed and we got settled in, I was just delighted to be there, really. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, it's very big difference because uh, the first difference I can show is the the work the work is very different, yes. From yes. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the second one, I think, yes, the the buildings are very different. Yes. It's not the same. And you showed me some of the footage from the, the, the children. They seem a very kind of friendly bunch and they just always seem to be laughing and, and playing and having fun. Yeah, it was really refreshing because, you know, um, here, in, here in Britain, we, you know, part of our work in football in the community is to work with hard to reach children and, and um, areas of deprivation. But, you know, we, we're going out there and these kids have been orphaned, you know, they, they live in an orphanage, they've, they've hardly got any uh, personal belongings, um, but just, you know, they were just happy to learn. Um, it was a really refreshing week because it was just, we were just smiling all week, really. It was really good fun. I'm Jane Carter, I'm Director of International Service, which is a charity that sends people to work overseas and share their skills. Um, well, I mean, Coaching for Hope, I suppose this is the project which KPR is involved in. It was really an idea that was um, set about by working with kids and seeing that football was like a passion for them. You know, So we thought we could use football as a force for good to improve their lives, to um, bring messages about HIV and avoiding it and give them access to coaching they wouldn't normally have. It's, really, you know, it's trying to get people here to see you know, that things in Africa aren't all doom and gloom, but there are things we can do to share you know, our love of football, really. It's a really powerful thing, and it's got across to lots more people than we ever imagined it would. You know, so I think it's just taken off now. This project it could go anywhere. Um, we'd start off approximately half past eight in the morning, and we work with local coaches first of all for an hour. Uh, we put on various um, structured training sessions for them to then take it on board and work with the children. Um, the children arrived at the camps between uh, ten o'clock and ten thirty, and then we went on to deliver um, the sessions we put on for the local coaches. Um, and work together actually in good teams and stuff and, and that was the format of, of the week to be honest with you. Um, during the afternoon sessions we then got into much more game related exercises with the children and it was nice to monitor them and see their progress uh, from day one through to day five. Well I think, I think it's well known that um, Africa's got a massive HIV AIDS problem and part of just as importantly as the football, part of uh, our role was using football to engage the 24 young coaches so that they would actually attend the course. Um, and then whilst we were looking after the children in the afternoon in the game-related sessions, they were actually having HIV workshops, uh, which for them was a, was a, was a first. So um, that we, it was using the game really to break down a few barriers. Now, as I understand it, you're a QPR fan, but we yeah. also had uh, coaches from... Hull and Brighton. Yeah. How did you get their involvement and then to come down? Um, we've got trustees on my board who've got connections with those clubs, so and again we just approached them and they were again really enthusiastic about it. This is the dressing room for the, where the team get changed. Uh, yeah. okay. um, I'm a bit of a tip from one of the <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, it's basically the fourth poorest country in the world. It's recently involved in the famine that affected Niger. So really, people live on less than a dollar a day. You know, it's, it's a very kind of 
subsistence economy, people don't really have much of anything. You know, most kids have, have one set of clothes, so they've got football kit. That was their second set of clothes, you know, so well, it's really talking about people with almost nothing, you know. Football is very popular in Burkina Faso, but we have some problems here there because uh, we don't have some football schools there. That's why football is very popular, but we don't... <laughs> You don't know. You don't have the players. Don't have the skills. The skill is not like European footballs. Mm -hmm. Yes, we use the power of, to play footballs. It's different from here. Here, mm -hmm. you have the skills. That's why the coaches come to Burkina Faso to to teach us about the skills, the, about the formation formation for the children in the football schools. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you see football kit all over the place, you know, lots of Arsenal <laughs> and mm. uh, other clubs and French clubs, because it's, it's a french speaking country, so they've got a lot of links with France. So most kids have got second-hand um, kit that they've been given from somebody in the market store or whatever, so it's a really sort of popular thing. Um, people watch matches in bars and stuff, so like we do. Thank you for football, yes. When they come, we very enjoy, yes, so it was... It was very, very nice to meet them, yes, mm -hmm. like friends, yes, before friendships and after friendships, the formations come after, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs>